At the age of 50, Russell Thomas became a full-time artist. That's something that he never really dreamt about. But at some stage during his 40s, he had to hit the pause button, reconsider where he was and where he was going. He reframed the way he was thinking and ended up with something so wildly beyond his dreams. Originally, it was a job that brought him to Fort McMurray, but it was the community that made him stay. A community that soon became home and that he would serve for 24 years. You know, someone asked me the other day, did you come with a plan, like a two-year plan or something? And I didn't, I really didn't. I, I, I'm a kind of a living in the present kind of a person. And uh, Fort McMurray immediately offered opportunities that I, I really believe I, I wouldn't have had in other places. Part of that was the, the role that I had, I was expected as a senior manager in this, in this radio business to get involved in the community. I would have gotten involved anyway, but it was part of my responsibility and I, I, just, I just plugged in real quick and uh, spent the next 15 years as a volunteer growing the Interplay Festival and doing all kinds of different things, getting involved in Keanu Theatre. And the, the, the more you connect, the more you plug in, the, 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 it, it feels like home. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's always felt like home. And um, you've been through, I want to say, so many careers. Mm. You've had so many things going on in, in Fort McMurray. Um, what is it that you're going to take with you mm. that really would stand out? Well, uh, on the professional side, I w I've been a professional marketing communication person in a variety of different forms, and so I learned a lot and uh, had a number of positions that were challenging, to be honest. And so you learn a lot of lessons when things are tough, whether that's in the radio business or when I was uh, working at Cano College and various other jobs. So I'll take those professional things with me. But I'll also take the love of volunteering and the the knowledge of how much you get uh, in terms of an education when you really volunteer. Because back in those days, uh, I used to keep track of the volunteer hours and they were literally thousands every year. Never got paid a dime for the work that I did with uh, the Interplay Festival. But what I got back in terms of relationships, in terms of personal and professional learning, ir irreplaceable, uh, priceless. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think anybody can learn from that. If you, if you really plug in and you, and you give, you, you get so much more in return. Your last official job, I want to call it, mm. um, was with United Way. Mm. And it was, it was also a challenging job, I think, a rewarding in a way. It was a high power kind of job. Um, what would you take away from your time at, at United Way? United Way was the wind beneath my wings. Uh, and, and I won't be a, a so dramatic to say that it saved my life, but it really pulled me out of a very difficult time professionally. When, uh, when Diane Shannon, the executive director at the time, called me, she'd heard that I was looking for something. She called me right away. She was at the airport in Vancouver, about to leave the country and to go off the grid for a month, but she, she, she called me right away and she said, oh, but you're not going to believe this. I have a perfect opportunity for you. And it really was. So she went away to Italy with her husband and then came back and um, offered me the job. And uh, the United Way work uh, introduced me to philanthropy. Uh, it gave me a much deeper understanding of community. And being in a happier place, it led to uh, everything that you see in the background. Uh, it was because I was working at United Way and things were good and, and I was happy and I started creating from a happy place mm -hmm. and discovered that people were responding to that. And it has created a, a living for our family that is wholly unexpected. But, you know, if you, did I ever dream of being a professional working artist? I didn't. I didn't have that dream, and I certainly would have wouldn't have imagined that it was possible. But it. But it is possible, and mm -hmm. it really was the United Way that uh, I believe helped to spark that. You just mentioned that United Way pulled you out of a very difficult time. Um, why? I don't know if it's why or how. You mm -hmm. know, it's uh, being surrounded by people that had so much of the community in their heart was a really positive thing for me at that point in my life. Um, I think prior to that, uh, I did a lot of work, personal work, to figure out what I really want in my life. Because I was, for the first time ever, I was coming to the end of something and I didn't know what was next. And that's an odd feeling when you're 40 some years of age. 
So I did a lot of uh, uh, inner searching and um, identified a number of things that I was really passionate about. The stuff that really drives me on a daily basis. And, and I wrote them down and there were five things and I, I, know, I remember several of them. I don't remember all five, but one was uh, creating every day. That was something I wanted to do as part of my life. And, and uh, sharing and connecting was really important to me. And so that's part of that is storytelling and, and sometimes the work that I do in, in, in bringing people together. I sometimes, hey, Bob, you need to meet Sue. Sue, you need to meet Bob. Now I'm going to leave. And, and they create magic together. So that's part really important to me. Sh expressing gratitude was one that was really important. So be grateful for the things that we have in our lives. And uh, so I, I did all of that work and I wrote these things down and they're at every workstation I had at work, at home, and I'd see them every day. And then through this tough cloudy period, I emerged into the United Way and into this. And uh, I think it's accumulation of all those things, intention, support, and uh, being surrounded by really good people. And um, I'll always be grateful to the United Way and Diane Shannon and the board and people like, uh, uh, I'm going to say Paul Hardigan, Colin Hardigan, and uh, Steve Ataro and, and so many of the great people that donate so much of their time. Mm -hmm. And that inspired me to use what I had discovered to give back. Um, and we've raised a lot of money and for, for various causes over the years. And I've had the honor of, of being challenged to uh, paint in front of large audiences, sometimes very difficult subjects. And it's really been magical. So I really attribute a lot of that to the United Way. A lot of people, um, I'm going to generalize when I say that, but you get to a point in life where you go, is this it? You know, mm. uh, is this as good as it's going to get? Were you there? Oh, no, never. Uh, no, I always knew and trusted that even during the hard times that I needed to go through the hard times. I knew that in my gut and it didn't make it any easier, but I knew it was part of the, the enrichment process of, of me as a human being. And so that helps when you know that, okay, this is a really crappy day, but I'm going to be better for it at the end. And there's something else coming. I'm now in the place and that I, it's not that every day is perfect. It, it certainly is not. And there are hard days, but I, uh, I get excited about what's next. And I know that, uh, A, I don't know what, what it's going to be. We're about to move to a new community. I don't know how that's going to uh, impact me artistically, but I know it will. And that's cool. It's exci mm -hmm. exciting. I don't know what, where we're going to go from here. Um, so, yeah, that my, I, I just think there's no end. <laughs> As a creative person, I... I there's no end to the things that I can explore and have fun with mm -hmm. and introduce and, and invite other people to go through the same thing. That's been fun. Um, how does your painting help you on dark days? Do you still have dark days and difficult oh, days? Yeah. There are days when uh, it's not that I have to force myself to paint, but I have the, I have the uh, work ethic that I still come out and work every day, seven days a week. And even on those days when it's tough, and sometimes the painting actually helps, you know, if, if I feel like uh, I'm spinning my wheels. And there's, there's times, because this is a business, and like any other business, you have down times, and you sometimes you know, lose your confidence. Oh, my gosh, maybe I've lost it, or maybe people don't care anymore. I just have learned to continue working, continue creating, and it always, you come out the other end, mm -hmm. always. Um, so those dark days help remind me of that and uh, we all have bad days for sure uh, but the key is not to stop keep moving forward even if it's a little bit every day connecting with people is also a very important part of mm. your life and i mean yeah. it's uh, your compassion that you have for people that compassion doesn't grow in everyone's garden mm. were you uh, like that all along has the painting really helped you in that is it kind of a combination of mm. who you are your compassion and your and your passion that's a really excellent question, and I've never been asked that before. And I think maybe it is. Maybe, maybe something has happened, because in this space, in Birdsong Studio, so often there, there will be moments where people just feel compelled to share something deeply personal and allow themselves to be emotional. It happened yesterday. It happened the day before yesterday. 
And I and people always, you know, what they, I'm so sorry that I don't ever apologize for being emotional. I'm honored that that you're allowing yourself to do that. So part of me believes this space has that energy. Uh, maybe my wife has wiped off on me or rubbed off on me because she does a lot of that energy, uh, spiritual work. Um, but I've always had an interest in people. I'm more interested in the human being standing in front of me rather than the, the, the really important person standing behind them. I, I'm more interested in the person that, that I'm talking to. And I've had the blessing of having so many people, because of the painting, come into the space. Many have become really dear friends. Art is uh, often taught, said to be healing, in a way. Mm. Um, in a way, I feel your, your art is not just healing for you, but also for other people. People come to you with death. I remember at one mm. stage you were saying that you feel like you're just painting dead people. Um, but there's healing in it. Inexplicable healing. I, I, and it's not something that I'm doing consciously. Uh, I think that it, it's not really about the painting, it's about something else. It's, a, it's uh, that person who has passed, people appreciate being able to see them in color, like to see life. Um, they don't want it to be, uh, the memory to be uh, dark or cloudy or, or and t to some degree, too perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's human and um, so that's the only way I can explain it. Um, and I'm honored that there's been many stories of people that have lost, even this morning, today is Father's Day, and on Facebook, uh, uh, Patricia's dad, I think it's Patricia or her husband's dad that I'd painted, and that's what they shared on Father's Day, and uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'm, I'm honored to be able to do it. So radio, uh, politician, volunteer, all of this happening here in Fort McMurray over mm. the past um, 20, 24 years, that you've been here, how do you how do you do that? How do you transition from one role to the next? We mm. often get caught up in a career where we are, and you'll feel that, you know what, I'm going to be an admin for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. How do I change? Well, as I look, you, you mentioned a number of different things, um, and the interesting thing, looking back on all those careers and all those communities that I worked with, is that they all are plugged into what I'm doing now. Not everybody, but there's, there's, there's connection points to all those parts of my life with what I'm doing now. In, in other words, everything has been additive to, to putting me where I am right now at 52 years of age, working full time as an artist, about to move to a new location and hopefully grow even more. It hasn't been uh, it happened alone. It's all those people, all those groups, all those connections, and, and the network that uh, I guess I've built over 25 years are serving today. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, I guess if there was a piece of advice in there, don't throw away the past. Embrace the past and allow it to help you into the future. How do you build on your passion to make your passion your life? Wow. Well. The, the, the most important thing is to work hard at it. I, I, I talk to young people about that a lot, that this just doesn't happen. It, it's, I, I'm working out here seven, eight hours a day, seven days a week, and consistently. So it's been, it's been a lot of work. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, what's the other thing? I guess the other thing is you have to figure out well, what you're passionate about. How, do, how does it create a life for you? How does it pay the bills? How do you get food on your table? And sometimes you have to be innovative. You have to be creative. Maybe you don't follow the normal path. Uh, so I think that because I'm not educated in, in arts, i self-educated, because I'm not following a playbook, I'm make, making my own playbook, I've created something that's working for us as a family. I would encourage people to, if they have a passion, um, just try different things to try to make it work. Find what is that value that you bring to the world and find the people that will see the value and pay you for it so that you can create a life. You can do those two things and amazing things can happen. You have to be mentally healthy though for that. How do you stay yeah. mentally fit in order to to take yeah, each day in sure. a brave step. There was a, a point in my life when I, I think I'd had a, a, what 
somebody might call an anxiety attack. And I don't even remember exactly when it was, but I remember being curled up in bed not wanting to leave. And uh, I think that was a point in my life where I had this revelation that in, in the decision-making process, I had to change how I was making decisions. And it was pretty easy, and I shared it with somebody just the other day, is all of a sudden I realized I had to make decisions that felt light and not heavy. I had carried too much weight for too many years as a senior executive, as a, as a volunteer president of an organization. I'd carried too much. And so every decision that I make now is what feels light and, and, and breathy or airy as opposed to is something feeling heavy or hard. I don't, I, I don't go there. It's, it, it's simple. And I, just, I sort of ask my body, well, what's the answer? What do I need to do? I often feel when we grow up, we have to act like adults right now, and we have to be serious, and we have to mm. make our lives, but there's still fun in it, and, uh, and you've been able to, to take the fun part and make that life for you and your family. What a blessing. I, it really is. We had an open house yesterday, uh, a customer appreciation event, and it was wonderful. We, people just showed up and started painting. Kids, adults, people that had never painted before, and we were all just sitting around enjoying each other's company and having some wonderful conversation. And that's our life. And really, that's what drives me. Uh, this studio is, is, uh, is not my studio, it's our studio, our being the collective we. It's, our, it's the community. And, and that intention is going to carry forward when we move to Okotoks. I'm not interested in having my studio or my space. I want it to be our space. I want people to feel comfortable to come and, and, and create with us. And that was really, for me, I can't speak for Heather, but that was the tipping point in the decision to move forward mm -hmm. with, with the move, was the idea that we want to share that and invite people to join us. If we could rew rewind the clock 25 years, mm. what would you say to young Russell driving into Fort McMurray on that very, very cold winter's day? <laughs> what advice? Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I'd have any. I, I think that... I just embraced what I was seeing. So I was coming down Beacon Hill, 43 below. There wasn't any wind. And, uh, and it, when it's like that in Fort McMurray and it's cold and there's ice crystals in the air, all the lights shoot straight up into the heavens. So that's mm -hmm. what I saw is all these lights shooting up in the lower river valley. And I went, oh my God, that's beautiful. So I, I instantly, all preconceived notions about oil sands or tar sands and all that stuff went away. and. And right away, I just fell in love. And uh, so I don't think I'd do anything different. I, I would have nothing to just go through it, just live, live every day, be in the present, be mindful, and enjoy. We are going to miss you. The day you announced on Facebook that you're going to leave was uh, almost one of those days where you say, where were you when Princess Diana died? <laughs> Because yeah. it's, it's losing an institution and you and your family, mm -hmm. Heather's done so much in the community as well, touching people's lives and making a change. And uh, I'm always almost jealous of Okotoks mm -hmm. for receiving a wonderful family like you guys. And mm -hmm. I think all of us in Fort McMurray will, will keep on saying, we know him, he comes from, mm -hmm. from our hometown. Thank you for giving that to us. And it's been very humbling uh, over the last number of weeks people that come into the space that say something like that, even though we may only know them a little bit. And uh, it's been just an honor and a joy. Russell's presence will always be felt in Fort McMurray, but you can now follow his new journey on russellthomas.ca or follow him on Facebook.